Well, match of the day is back in action. Today we're down at Layer Pits. It's me versus my old mucker, Pete Castle. Last time we had a little friendly match together, it was a draw. So far, well, <laughs> Pete's got one on and I haven't had anything. <laughs> We've been here for about an hour so far. Um, it's been it's quite a carpy morning, really, isn't it, mate? Yeah, it's been nice and overcast, yeah, considering it's been really sunny the last few days, hasn't it? So. Yeah, I was out yesterday and got nicely sunburnt. Um, but yeah, that, it feels quite carpy. We've come this end of the lake because the wind's blowing up here. There's two swims here. The left-hand one's obviously got, got the bay and uh, there's a, an outlet that runs out here. So there's a bit, bit more features this side. I'm sort of saying this because, you know, the reason Pete caught one and I haven't. <laughs> but I did let him have the better side, you know. I was quite friendly like You that. did give me the choice, yeah. <laughs> I must admit, I fancied the features rather than fishing open water like you. I did think that the fish were starting to come round before that rod went off. But... I think, you know, what was out here, a lot of them have moved off, but there hasn't been as many showing. Obviously, uh, that, that is a feature there, and I think there's always the odd ones drifting around that way. Well, as a crow flies, I only live about 20 miles from Layer Pits, and I've never, ever fished the place. This will be my first Layer Carp. Got to say, it is a pretty uh, mad old lake, you know. Isn't I'm, it? I'm really impressed. Ooh. I'm really impressed. I really like it. I didn't realise, actually, it was so pretty. For some reason, I thought it was going to be... You know, sort of very worked lake and... No, I mean, it's been here a long time now. Years ago, it did literally just used to be a bare sand pit. Yeah. Obviously, that was before my time. Ooh, 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 he's on again. You weren't trying to knock that off, was you? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Nice one, Joe. Brilliant. Good angling, mate. Thank one in the much. bag. Thank for that. All right, nice little common. First one of the day. Hopefully, uh, bag a few more like this. Let's get it back and I'll show you what I caught it on. Another nice common, second one of the day. Um, it did start to go a little bit quiet out there and then a few more fish moved in. There's obviously uh, quite a few fish moving about in groups, so we get this one back. It's not over yet, so if I can get a few more ahead of Joe, put the pressure on, then Let's get it back. Got here about 10 minutes before Joe this morning. Had a quick look, car park's up the top there. And uh, see fish in this bay straight away. They were, they were coming in on the surface, seeing them crash out. When Joe turned up, he wasn't too keen on coming in here. He, I think he wanted to go right up the far end where he's been catching them off the top and stuff like that. But we thought we'd give it a couple of hours down this end. He was kind enough to give me the first choice. And I, I did pick this side, which was closer to the bay. Um, they have been starting to come round a little bit and uh, definitely two different approaches. I don't know if you just heard that then. He's, he's fished this lake since he was a kid, so he's bought lots of spob mixes and bits. I've even seen maggots in his, uh, in his armoury there. Um, I've kept everything really simple. I've just got some frozen cell with me, a few little bits just to sort of like spice up a bag, but I haven't really got that much with me. I've not got any spodding kit or anything like that. Um, thankfully, what I've bought is working and it's putting the pressure on him now to to try and catch up. I can feel the eagerness. First fish, he was like, well done, mate. Brilliant first layer carp. Second one, he's feeling the pressure. So um, I've left hand rod, just got a little funnel web bag on there, uh, a few crushed baits. Uh, right hand rod, got a chod rig on. Not had a fish on it yet. Been getting liners on it, so I might change that rig in a little while so they're both fishing the same, because obviously that's the winning formula. <laughs> Well, here we are in my swim. I've got two rods out at the moment. One I've put a bit of spod mix on, and the other one I've just literally catapulted sort of 50 or 60 boilies over. It's only about 30 or 40 yards out, that one. Um, just a few of these hybrids that I've had soaking in water for a couple of days. On the spod mix front, we've got um, a load of corn, um, some oats, some chopped up hybrid, hemp ground bait, and then this stuff, the old Cloud 9. And the reason I like that stuff in is because it does what it says in the tin. It clouds it right up, and it also gives you the option to fish over, spotting over zigs, um, if that looks like it could be the one. It's a tactic on here. I think, in fact, this is probably the first place that it sort of started spotting over zigs. And when it was sort of discovered, it was just absolutely ridiculous. You could not keep one rod in the water. Um, over here this year or so, I don't think it's really kicked off with that method yet. However, um, it is something that's worth a go. 
So obviously spotting out that gives you the option of fishing on the bottom or a zig and you've also got the option of putting both out there if it's sort of going off or it looks like it's worth doing. I've got to say I'm not totally happy with this area out here. I never used to do brilliantly out in this open water, however we'll give it a go for another hour or so. But if it doesn't look like it's going to happen, I reckon chances are I'm going to move down the end of this bank where I know there's a nice swim with a big tree line, plenty of features. I think there are always um, fish holding out in that area, so that might be worth a go. But as I say, I will mess about in the next hour here first. It ain't over yet. <laughs> Got number three on. Joe's still spotting next door. He's obviously feeling the pressure. All come off the uh, left hand rod. Real simple bottom bait tactics. And uh, fingers crossed I can get this in and have a few more. Very quiet on this side. I thought, I thought it was a fish on, you know. Oh, we'll pick that one up. Good. Good. <laughs> You're hoping it's going to fall off, are you? No, I'm just hoping that's another rod out of action for now. <laughs> I think I've dealt with it. You were, you was very polite first thing this morning. I know. And then it was like, do you want a cup of tea? I know. And now it's like, fall off. It's good. You got all nasty. I should have tossed for the swim, really. Do you know what I mean? I was would, being would far you, too nice. Would you have picked this one? Oh, out of these two? Yeah. Yeah, of course. This oh, one's got features. I thought you wanted the open water. I oh, know, I was actually being nice. Well, the thing is, I knew that if I had this swim and caught more than you, you'd say that I had the upper hand because I fished it before. So I thought I'd better let you have the upper hand, really. I thought when you put your barrow sort of leading into that one, you wanted that. No, nah, honestly. I was being I'm good polite. like that. I know you are. <laughs> yeah, a bit of jovial banter going on there, but I think Joe's starting to feel a little bit of pressure to catch. He's already talking about moving. Um, if he goes, I might go with him. Although I'm catching, I'd like to have a little look around the lake, have a look at some different swims and that, maybe try something else as well, try some different tactics. Let's get this one back in. Let's try again. What I've decided to do coming to a new water is just use tactics that I've got complete faith in. You know, I've tried all the complicated rigs. I've even come up with a few ideas for complicated rigs, but I've ended up always reverting back to very, very simple fluorocarbon, 15 pound, uh, just got a knotless knot on there. A little bit of silicon tubing and a bottom bait. Always fish it with a bottom bait, the way that I set it up. If you, if you critically balance it for some reason, you start losing fish. You might get more runs, but you lose fish. Just using cell, 15 mil cell, freezer baits. Uh, got them in a cool bag, still frozen now, so I'm putting them out as fresh as they can be. And then all what I'm attaching to there is just a little funnel web bag. And in that funnel web bag, I've just got some crushed cell. I've got some de-hulled hemp, so it's just dry and I've just got a little bit of rock salt in there. Nothing complicated at all. And um, see some fish out there on a the spot, and uh, it's all been on the left-hand rod. I think Joe's thinking about moving because it is all left, and he's obviously way over to the right. Um, so yeah, very, very simple tactics, and it's catching me the fish. Well, there's only so long you can sit behind rods that are not doing anything and a swim that no fish is showing in. So I'm off down the far end of this bank. There's a nice tree line out to the right. I can put one off of there and then maybe one in open water. But I'll have a look, see if anything's showing when I get down there. Get out. <laughs> right, here's my new plot. As you can see, I've got a nice tree line out to the right there and there's actually a gap that goes through to another bit of the lake. Um, I'm fishing tight against the trees. Just put about, I don't know, 15, 20 spots out there. I've changed the mix a little bit now. I'm not using the Cloud 9 anymore. Because I'm fishing on the bottom, I want more bits that are going to get to the bottom. So I've got some um, cell pellet in there, uh, a lot more sweet corn. And as you can see, you know, there's a lot more bits and bobs that are going to sink through to the bottom and uh, hopefully get them feeding. I've seen one fish show out there already. It's looking fairly promising. It's starting to get a bit warmer now and the wind's dropping off. So uh, obviously that's not ideal for fishing on the bottom. But I think spots like this, you know, they're, they're the sort of areas that the fish just go and hold up in anyway. They'll always hold a few fish. There's not many lakes on, uh, sorry, not many swims in this lake where they've got lots of cover, you know, big overhangs and that. So I'm sure they take full advantage of them. Well. We'll see what happens. I've actually got them clipped up. I'm fishing so tight to the trees. What I've done is I've, I'm standing there to clip up and then um, I'm leaving it in the clip 
And obviously I've got a couple of yards there if I need it, but I've got really tight clutches. I'm on my rods, I'm not going to be going anywhere. So if they go, I'm straight on it. And then obviously the clip's still on there. I don't want to let them have any more line anyway, because they could get into them trees. And then as soon as I've got the fish in the net, hopefully if I do catch one, <laughs> I can just unclip the rig and uh, clip another one on there, cast it straight back out and it's still clipped up. Helps a little bit, saves you having to recast and clip up again. Fingers crossed, it'll happen any minute. <laughs> Right, to keep my baits ultra fresh, I always keep them in a cool bag, even on a day session. So, got my cell all frozen up. So when they're going out, even in the throwing stick, sometimes they're going out frozen. You know, just 20 seconds in the water, they'll be defrosted. So to keep your bait ultra fresh, um, I've always been led to believe that these kind of active baits, that if, you, if you're going to leave them sweating in a bag, it doesn't do them any good at all, and you're best off putting them in an air dry bag. But just to keep these fresh, at the end of the day, they can just go back in the freezer because they're still frozen. Well, there we go. It didn't take too long for them fish to respond to that spot. Numero uno, and I've got another one in the net. <sighs> Creeping up on him now. Hopefully he's starting to sweat. It's looking good for another, so I ain't going to mess about. Pop this one back, quickly show you the other one to prove that I have caught two, and then uh, we'll crack on and get some more spot mix out there. There we go, it's a little bit bigger that one. Probably around sort of 13, 14 pound mark. Nice dark common. As you can see, they're well spawned out, proper skinny. They could do with a bit of grub, these things. So, best I get on the spot and give them a bit more. <laughs> come away, come away, come away. <laughs> You've got to pull them straight away from that tree line. So, as soon as that rod goes, it's in action. Full test curve. You only have to give them to it for uh, 10 feet or so, once they're well away from that trees. It's all open water. I'll just turn that other one off. Them rods were so tight together, I reckon they were literally about six inches away from each other. They fell so well and so tight to the trees, I thought oh, I'll just leave them, but as a result, I've picked up my left-hand one. So soon I can get this one in the better, because that other rods, the rig's being dragged across the lake. Actually, look, if I could just go underneath there like that, Nick one per one. <sighs> We're off. <laughs> that was easy enough. And slack. Lovely. There we go, peas in a pod. Catching him up now. I've only got one rod in the water at the moment, so I need to get this one back and get that one out. Come on, let's have it. <laughs> well, there we go. There's my little simple rig for the day. A little bit longer than I'd normally use it. Reason for that is it's quite silty in here, so just to allow for that. Size 10 wide gape, 14 mil hybrid, tiny little bit of cork on the top there just to give it a little bit of buoyancy. Obviously it just takes the weight of the hook off of there. Nice and light. And them little hooks are so sharp, you know, and they're almost sort of very undetectable, you know, because they're so light and so sharp, just fly up in the mouth, catch hold. Um, Three and a half ounce lead because I'm wanging it sort of 80 odd yards or so, and there is a bit of wind as well, so that obviously helps punch it into where you want it. And uh, yeah, that's all ready to go. So just a lead clip, all simple as you like. So I'll best get that one back out there because I'm getting a bit of a cane in today. It's not exactly going my way. I've put two spots in the tree so far and uh, a rig as well. And at the moment, I've got no rods in the water. <laughs> so I'll best try and make up some time. And I've persisted with a little chod rig on this on this rod, cast it a little bit longer into some slightly deeper water. And from what I felt on the bottom as well, the, uh, there's a lot of sediment on the bottom in here, and I've really struggled to feel for a good drop. But on this cast, it went bang, and I thought, yeah, that one's going to stay there, you know. Nice common on a little choddy, little mainline pineapple pop up. And what a lovely way to end with a cracking mid-20 layer pit common. I'd, I'd pop down here once to see someone just to drop some bits off in the car park but never really had a look around, not fished it. Obviously heard a lot about the lake since I was a, a young boy. Uh, for some reason, always gone to sort of Norfolk, Cambridgeshire, never come much into Essex carp fishing. And considering this is only sort of 30 minutes, 35 minutes from my house, to nearly 40 years old myself now, and to come here and catch a fish like this now, it's, uh, Fantastic. So, 
coming down to a new water. Just kept everything really, really simple. Using tactics that I'm confident in using anywhere. And it's uh, caught me cracking fish like that. Well, mate, the final whistle was blown. I did have a bit of a mare up there, if I'm honest with you. Did you? I thought I had a click then. No. <laughs> I think there's a rod going. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you've done right down there, haven't you, mate? It's been good. I've really, really enjoyed the day, yeah. What did you have in the end? Six? Six, yeah. yeah. Finished it off with a cracking mid-20 common as well. That's it was, it was yeah. a real pretty fish. Good skills. Well, well done. <laughs> no, thank you for today. No worries. We'll have a, we'll have a rematch another time. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Nice one, mate. I'll uh, catch up with you soon. Yeah, take care. Good angling. Thank you.